Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing channel. JRBTreeClimbing.com is my website, also my Facebook group, and my Patreon. I have an SRT scenario for you today, and we're starting to get into SRT scenarios that I would actually use. I prefer DSRT because of the ease of getting in a tree, but this scenario was prompted by your questions, and the question was the following. John, the trees in my woods, we just don't have these live, viable crotches like you have in your trees in Pennsylvania. I've got trees where the first branch might be 40 feet up and it's dead. How can I get into that tree? So the first thing I want you to be aware of is that a dead branch can't be trusted with your life. I understand that a dead branch could be incredibly strong, but generally speaking, we don't know. So I don't advise any kind of rigging where a load is being placed on a dead branch even if it goes around the trunk. I see folks climbing this way and it worries me because the angle of their running loop, they call it a girth hitch, but it's it's angled downward and there's still a load being placed on that dead branch. And so my preference is to rig, use the dead branch to rig around the trunk but get our anchor horizontal where none of the load is on the dead branch. That's what I'm going to show you today. So I just put my throw ball in this tree. It is intentionally quite low. Let's follow my throw ball up to the crotch so I can show you what I've done. This tree has no branches until this point in the tree. There's a dead branch on the backside and maybe a foot above it. I've got another dead branch. It's quite small, just over an inch in size. And clearly, I, I would trust my life on that, even if it was alive, even though it's a, it's a red oak. It's a strong tree and a strong branch, but we can't trust our life on that. But we can use that crotch to rig a rope into the tree. We're going to be using, building on knowledge from prior videos. So make sure you're familiar with the Maverick hitch, and I'm going to show you how to tie the Maverick hitch with a special finish. And we're just going to call that the Houdini finish. We scratched our heads for a while here in the woods today and that's what we came up with. Okay so I'm at the base of the tree. Here's my throw line. I've removed my throw ball. It's coming down going straight up over that crotch. Here's my climbing rope. I'm going to take my climbing rope and I'm going to insert it under one side of the throw line and over the other side of the throw line. I am going to fashion a Maverick hitch. Please see my prior video on the Maverick hitch. I've got about enough rope here so that when, when this is at the height of my nose, the end of the rope is down on the ground. I'm going to get on my knees here just to make it a little easier to keep you in view. Over, around the back and over. See my prior video on, on the Maverick if you need any help with that. I'll lock it. Now, I take my other carabiner. I'm going to capture the location of my th thumb. The two running strands plus this strand I call the nose of the Maverick. Okay, now how am I going to get that up in the tree? Well, I'll take my my throw line. This could be a paracord preset. Doesn't doesn't matter. I happen to have a, a, a metal link on the end. You might not. I'll go ahead and leverage it. Now I'm going to pull that up into the tree. But how am I going to make sure it doesn't get stuck? Well, remember that when we when we got started, I put I put this line under. I put it under. So this is the height I would normally tie it at. I'm going to pull it away from the tree a little bit. Remember, I've got one side of my throw line or my paracord preset under, under the rope. I'm going to take that with my right hand out, and I'm going to apply tension. And now I'm, hold, I'm holding this up. I'll, I'll tighten this up just a little bit to make sure there's just a little bit of resistance. Just a little bit of resistance. Now, see here, if I'm pulling, it gets stuck, but I am able to control this by going around to the back of the tree. Now, typically, I will put my retrieval line on 
just in case anything went wrong. If I needed to pull this back down, I'm going to just use the other end of my power cord, but I'll put it on the release line in case I need to pull this down for any reason. Now I'm going to get this up into the tree and I will use this power, the, the preset or the throw line to get it unstuck as it hits any uh, rough spots on the bark. So I'm going to step around to the back of the tree. This is the location from which I typically rig. I'll be climbing the other side of the tree. But see what's going on here? I can control this bite. I can control it. Now I will stop, the, the height that I will get as an anchor is dictated by the back, the end towards me. This side here is going to fall back down. So I, if there were any branches on the tree, I couldn't go past them. I can only go until the first branch. Now, so take here, let's say I wanted to try to get just a little bit more. I probably can by taking my throw line and walking around the other side of the tree. That's about it. That's about as high as I can get. So now my right hand I start to tighten the Maverick. Starting to tighten it. Tighten it. Tighten it. And look the Maverick is horizontal. It's horizontal. And now when I load it there is nothing on the dead branch. I've set an anchor on the tree below the dead branch with no load on the dead branch and now I can climb this. Okay I want you to see it one more time but this time from a distance so you can get an idea how I do this. I'm gonna go over one and under the other. I'm gonna go over the one on the left because I will be pulling on that one to get this assembly up into the tree. How much slack do I use on my right side? The working end is about from my nose to my toes. That's about how much I use. I'm going to form the Maverick and again I don't really need to look at a Maverick to tie it and you need to develop the same fluency should you attempt to reproduce anything I'm doing. We need two carabiners for this. One to lock the Maverick and one to rig into that Houdini finish. Just saw it a moment ago in detail. Now I'm going to do it in real time. Okay, now it's ready to rig, but we have got to take the, the line on my right, which will be rigging it up, and I put that onto the carabiner. Give this a little tension. Now, if I had a separate retrieval line, which I didn't bring with me today on this episode I would I would tie my retrieval line here but improvisers that we are I will attach the other end of my throw line to that now why why well you never know if this rig doesn't go perfectly it doesn't go perfectly and we don't feel safe climbing it well we've got to be able to retrieve it you never want to put up an anchor that you can't retrieve under any circumstances Okay, so I've got this, you know, you can see the distance here. It's at least uh, the tree diameter times two. I've got that space here. I'm now, I'll just drop this. I'm just going to drop this. And now I'm going to start pulling that up into the tree. How did this, the fact that I ran this rigging line under the rope allows me to get that up. It's a pretty rough oak. And I will step out of your view. You can tell by the angle where I'm located. I need to get this up as high as possible. And that might require me going. So that's, that's about as high as I'm going to get it. I'm going to give this a good tug now. Good. That's as, as high as I can get it. And now, still holding tension on my left hand, I'm going to pull the load side, and it'll, it'll tighten that Maverick. And I bounce the two back and forth. You can see it's horizontal. Now, right now in this position with your eye in the canopy, you can see I don't have any load on the dead 
branch. There's no load on it. All of the load is on the on the rope. So I want to bring you back down to me. I'm going to, I'm going to execute this climb, but I want to point something out. If the last time you climbed a tree was by the same method, well, you might have your Longhorn Agile. It might already be on the line as it is in, in, in my circumstance. So I don't need to tie my Longhorn Agile if it's already on the tree. So see my prior video on the Longhorn Agile and how to tie it? But I'm simply going to get started. Okay, now you've seen all this before. I've clipped my main bridge into my Longhorn Agile. I'm going to put my guard foot loop on, put my foot in the foot loop, engage my redundant bridge, ensuring I have two points of connection to the rope at all times. I'll set that anchor. I see it's set nice and horizontally. I feel completely comfortable climbing this. Technique is the same as you've seen many times. I simply advance slack out of the Garda stand up using the power of two arms and one leg you can use two legs if you prefer and you know i'd be bringing up my platform i'd stop at whatever height i want my platform and i would set it but before rappel we always have to go up to our anchor to unlock And I always leave a little bit of space between the top of my friction hitch and the anchor because I need to be able to get my hand in there to break it if necessary. So, again, my platform would have been on the tree. I'll remove my foot loop. I will engage my munter. And the last thing I do before rappel is remove my locking carabiner so that it can be retrieved. Again, during rappel, there's really, there's no resistance, there's no tension on my friction hitch. You can tend that with one finger. All of the resistance is managed by the Garda. Let's disconnect. If I plan on using this hitch again, I may want to leave it on the line. I tend to leave a carabiner in it to ensure that the load loops don't get disheveled. And now it's time to retrieve. Okay, so let's watch this magic. I am going to pull on the retrieval line. I'm walking away from the tree a little bit, pop it through and look, the whole thing falls down and, and it leaves my preset right back where we started. And so that I could return to this tree and I can continue to rig off of this dead branch for an indefinite period of time. Okay, so I know that's a complex rigging scenario, but it's, it's extremely doable. And I have used this, this hunting season. I made sure to get some reps on it and I have rehearsed it just dozens and dozens of times. And I'm glad I took my time to make the video because in the beginning, I didn't always have my retrieval line on the system. And there were a couple of times where I just wasn't comfortable. It got hung up on a snag and it wasn't really nice and horizontal. And the fact that I have my retrieval line on means I can always retrieve it if I want to. I ask as always that you take responsibility for your own safety and your own actions should you attempt to duplicate anything that you see here today. And don't ever climb on anything unless you are completely comfortable that it has properly engaged the trunk. Thank you.